Hey guys, welcome to the high ground. My name is Fabio and today we're talking about a topic I'm super excited about. We're talking about land nav. Let's get this started. Today's video is part of a full series about land nav. Today we will talk about the most basic but also most important tool. The map, how to read it, how to use it. As you can see, I have a bunch of maps here with me. Some of them well used out in the mountains, some of them not so much. After this video, you will be able to read any of them and understand what they tell you. One of the reasons why maps are so useful and so important is that with only a map, you are already able to determine your position if you have somewhat visible terrain features. I'll throw the map behind me and then we will have a look at it. This map is a map of the city of Zurich. It shows the inner city and its surroundings, the more rural areas. Before we go deeper into the main field of the map, I want to make you aware of some important information on the border or the surrounding of the map. First of all, you can see the scale of the map down here. It's 1 to 25,000. That means that one centimeter of the map equals 25,000 centimeters in real life. So 250 meters is one centimeter on the map. Another important feature of any map is the legend. The legend basically explains what the signs and objects and names on the map mean. Now with this map, it has a very extensive legend that is actually on the back side. So I brought you two other maps. One is from France and you can see this one, it has a fairly small legend just with the basic vegetation, a little bit of waterway and that's more or less it. I have another type of this map or another region of this type and you can see it's very extensive. So those are all different signs and it goes into very much detail. It even shows you where a shooting range is, um, antennas, etc. So this is a very detailed legend. It's not important that you are aware of any well, little picture or pictogram you will find on that legend to understand the map, but you should know where to look for if you don't understand something that is actually printed on the map. So that's the legend. One important thing is that legends and the little pictograms on maps actually differ from each other. They are different from map type to map type, from country to country. So don't assume that you know something just because you saw it on a different map. It doesn't necessarily have to be the same. Now let's get back into the map. Before we look more detailed into the center of the map, let's just check the border. As I said, you have the scale here, but you also have a lot of other useful information. Here you can see the death distance between the contour lines. And this is very useful because you have to be careful. On this map, the distance between the contour lines is 10 meters. On a different map from the same publisher, you have a distance of 20 meters between the contour lines, just because it's in a mo more mountainous area of Switzerland. You can also see the name of the next map that basically shows the area south to what we see on this map. And you have information on the coordinate grid. This is the Swiss reference. This is the angles and minutes um, of the normal geogetic net. If we go to the lower left corner of the map, we can find the date of the map. So this map is actually from 2013. So everything you see there, buildings, etc., is nine years old. In this area of the map, you find a lot of additional information on, for navigation purposes, for the measurement of altitudes on this map, and most importantly, on the declination. 
Now this declination is an interesting animal. The declination of a map basically means that the geographic North Pole is not in the same spot than the magnetic North Pole. So if you have a compass, it will show you the magnetic North Pole, which might be a little bit off from the geographic North Pole that is actually north on your map. To compensate for this being a little bit off, you have uh, on most of compasses, you have a declination finder or a declination adjustment where you can just put in the declination of your current position and then it will be more or less aligned with the north of the map. Naturally, the further you go north or the further you go towards a pole, the more influence will this declination have on your actual bearing that you're walking. But there is something you have to keep in mind. So some maps actually give you a declination correction in degree or in minutes or even angle seconds. That's all good and that makes a lot of sense. But you have to consider that there are so-called declination anomalies. So declination anomalies are areas where you have magnetic activity from rocks, just from the magnetic field of the earth, and those will influence the declination as well. So if you, for example, look at a map of Switzerland, um, Switzerland has those declination pockets and maybe Within Switzerland, the declination might be 2 degree, but within the declination pocket, it might actually be 4 degree. So you have to be very careful because those declination pockets make differences of up to 10 degrees angle. Let's finally have a look at the center of the map, the map itself. As a rule, the upper end of the map is always oriented toward the north. City names are printed from east to west and the name on water indicates the flowing or current direction of the water. The letters on the water show the direction in which the water flows. So in this case from south to north or from north to south, but it doesn't actually show the direction of the current. So those letters don't show us if the water comes in via this river or if it goes out. If we want to have this information, we have to look very closely and you can see small blue arrows that actually show the current direction of the water. Other things you can see on the map is anything that is green on this map is a forest. You can see here the open land, you have orchards, you can see different type of streets. You can actually see the railway, rivers, buildings, etc. You can find an uh, explanation of all those little items in the legend of the map. Until now, we have been pretty two-dimensional with looking at this map. But there has to be something that shows you how the actual terrain looks, because it makes a huge difference if you try to walk up a steep wall or if you just walk over a field. And the way to show you how steep the terrain actually is are the so-called contour lines. On this map, the contour lines are brown and they have 10 uh, meters distance in between. What does that mean? So you have one line on this map and you have another line on this map. And you know that in 3D, the one line is actually 10 meters higher terrain than the line below. So the closer those lines are together, the steeper is the terrain. The further those lines apart, the lower is the angle of the terrain. Let's look at that on the map. Contour lines with numbers are called index lines. The numbers show the altitude of this specific contour line. So every terrain point where this contour line goes is 600 meters high. Towards one direction it gets higher and towards the other direction the terrain gets lower. The distance between one index line and the next contour line and then the next contour line 
is what we previously saw on the bottom of the map, it's 10 meters. So this control line is 600 meters, the next one is 610 meters, and up we go until we get to the top of this little hill, and the most uh, upper point is 655 meters. As you can see, the control lines go around this terrain feature, so you can clearly see that it is a hill. It gets higher and higher or lower towards the outside. Let's look a little bit on more complex contour lines. You can see these contour lines are very close together, so it's very steep terrain. And this form actually shows that it is a ridge. Here we have a valley and here we have the next ridges. If you look at the larger area, you will see that with a little bit of practice, you will get a three-dimensional picture of the landscape. Here it is pretty clear if you studied maps for a bit that you have a ridge that goes up and up and up until its highest point and you have steep slopes to the east and west of it. So much for reading a map. This was the first installment of this LandNav series. In the next video, we will actually take the map and go out and work with it in the nature. I appreciate that you watched this video. If you liked it, please give us a thumbs up, follow the channel. Thank you very much and I see you next time.